12 conference is working with Quidel to implement daily COVID testing with rapid results for athletes, also for coaches and for staff across all their campuses. As of right now, the Pac-12 has postponed all sports competitions through the end of the year. Joining us now to talk about this is Quidel CEO Doug Bryan and Pac-12 Commissioner Larry Scott. Good to have you both here. First, Doug, just tell us how this partnership will work and what happens. Well, it's great to be here again and uh, very proud, of course, of my organization for getting to where we are from a supply chain perspective and also being able to actually uh, meet the capacity that's going to be required. But, you know, we've been working with researchers at universities within the Pac-12 for at least uh, a few months now, some as many as four months. And, um, you know, we're sincerely interested in, um, in a large asymptomatic study. It'll be the first of its kind. You know, we had the first rapid antigen test, but now we're also we're, we're going to be engaged in research that's going to allow us to understand a lot more about what, uh, what uh, asymptomatic testing looks like. In a, in a large population. So just a few weeks ago, we began to engage with the PAC-12. And again, we're super proud of, of being engaged in, in an organization that was able to, to react so quickly. And, and I think the timing's great. Larry, could this mean, if we do get these rapid tests to your various schools, could this mean that we could see a return for the PAC-12 before the end of the year? Yeah, this is a big breakthrough for us uh, by uh, working with Quidel and being able to have this point of care testing that gives us near immediate results. It allows us to test daily um, to give us a high degree of confidence that through the contact in sports, uh, we're not promoting a spread of the virus. Um, we still have a few states and counties that have not given permission for contact practice or competition. I think today's development will help us uh, persuade that we can do so safely for our student athletes. And it certainly gives me a high degree of confidence we're going to be able to start competition in January and now maybe even before with this big breakthrough. Of each of these tests, uh, I, I guess uh, behind the question is how widely uh, could this be uh, spread out, for example, to allowing fans to, to attend matches uh, as well? Or is that not really economically viable only for the players? Well, we're starting with the uh, student athletes. Obviously, these tests are in limited supply. We feel fortunate to have struck the strategic partnership with Quidel, which will have a major research component. Uh, and based on what we learn, and as the capacity ramps, uh, I know there are others in college sports as, as well as fans that'll be interested. It's our hope that we're contributing uh, to society's return to work, uh, to be able to return to school safely, to return to mass gatherings. I think that's where this research could be very important. But Doug, isn't the real question here whether it's prudent for, for schools to be prioritizing athletics in the first place when, when there are still questions about whether they can even come to college? I mean, so many schools already have sent kids home and there are all sorts of economic problems. So is athletics really the focus? Well, this is really just the, the, the next step. You know, we started by addressing people with the greatest need, healthcare providers, first responders. We then engaged in testing in nursing homes, you know, doing our best to play our part to get grandmas and grandpas reunited with their families. And this is just the next step. So uh, I do believe that the data that we're gonna generate from these, uh, the, the study is gonna be very helpful in creating a testing algorithm that ultimately will get everybody back to where they wanna be. What will be the threshold, Larry, for for conducting a game if you do get a positive test before the game? Well, we're hoping with um, these, uh, these tests that any student athlete that tests positive will not be participating in a practice or a game. They'll be called out, they'll be quarantined, and obviously uh, contact tracing. Um, there's been a concern that in sports like basketball and football, if you actually enter a practice or a game, you know, with, with the disease, there's many, many fellow teammates that could have come in contact and you'd have to quarantine a whole team. Well, if you can stop the student athletes from starting a practice in the first place or entering the game in the first place by having this point of care immediate result, then the likelihood you're going to have to quarantine a whole team goes way down. Doug, obviously your antigen test can, can open a lot of things, not just college sports. 
So, so what other organizations could you partner with? Could, could you partner with airlines or schools or, or anyone else to try to open this economy with more confidence and try to limit the infection spread? Yeah, the number of people that have approached this is endless. And, and at this point, we're just trying to prioritize. But all of those that, that you mentioned, Sarah, are, are, are possibilities. Making a good decision about what the next step is, is, is super important, I think. But more than that, you know, we've doubled our capacity within the last month, and we think we're going to be able to help more and more people. Uh, but all of those that you had mentioned uh, certainly seem viable over time. And, and my colleagues in the industry are also stepping up and producing products as well. And I, and I, I welcome that. <clears throat> Uh, that participation because it's going to take all of us i think to, to to ultimately get this done